What's happening out of the park baseball fans? How is everybody doing tonight? I am so, so excited to be here tonight. Uh, I am so glad that all of you guys are here tonight. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are going to have a good time uh, this evening. It is time for our very, very first look at Out of the Park Baseball 21. And I am so thrilled not only to have all of my friends here, you guys, I'm also really, really glad to have uh, another one of my friends here. Uh, a long time, uh, a lot of you guys know who he is, who have been hanging around our streams for a while. Um, our senior developer, Mr. Matt Arnold. Matt, how are you, sir? I've been good. It's good to have you here. Are you a little busy these days? Are they keeping you busy? You got enough to do? Yeah, it's, uh, there's, there's still a lot, to, a lot going on. So. <laughs> So, Matt, before we get into uh, all, uh, the details of what we're doing tonight, which is a whole bunch of good stuff, um, I wanted first to let uh, let the the you know the out of the park developments fans, the guys who are here who might not know you, get to know you a little bit. So, Matt, why don't you? Um, well, first of all, question for you: How long you've been working for out of the park developments? I've been working long enough that it takes me a couple minutes to count to uh, how many years I've been here. Uh, man, I didn't even remember now. It was, I think 15 was my first release. So this was six years, seven years, something, something around there. So. Okay. Very good. Very good. Well, um, Matt is uh, really one of the really, you know, really the, one of the real drivers of, of out of the park baseball, uh, in particular, uh, the you know the traditional franchise mode. So not only is Matt joining us this week uh, for the first look, but he'll also be joining us next week, as you can see, March second, nine p.m. A franchise deep dive. Uh, during that session, uh, Matt and TJ will be spending a lot of time talking about the all the new scouting and the drafting, and all the really cool stuff that you put in place for that, and a whole bunch of other franchise deep dive elements. Um, this week, we got a whole bunch of cool stuff to look at as well. Um, so before I get started, I want to say a couple of quick things. Number one, I wanted to make sure um, that everybody knows that you can uh, pre-order um, Out of the Park Baseball 21 today. And you can do that by going to ootpdevelopments.com slash pre-order. If you pre-order it today, you will get 10% off Out of the Park Baseball 21 you will get it three days early uh, during the public beta on March 17th because it comes out on March 20th. And you will also uh, be able to get a gold pack, uh, a free gold pack uh, for Perfect Team. One other thing I wanted to make sure that everybody knows tonight, very shortly we'll be opening up a giveaway because tonight on this very show, we are going to be giving away a free copy of Out of the Park Baseball 21 to one lucky winner. It was a uh, it was a great idea that one of our viewers had last night, and so we're going to be doing that tonight. So, right now, I am going to turn on that giveaway. So, in just a moment, you're going to see the ability to hit exclamation point ticket. So you should see that happening right now. So everybody who sees that if you enter by hitting exclamation point ticket, you will be entered to win a free copy of Out of the Park Baseball 21 on or around March 20th, 2020. Um, depending upon how you want it, if you want it directly from us or if you want it from Steam, we'll take care of you. Uh, when we announce the giveaway, uh, we'll be able to make sure that, uh, that everybody, uh, that the winner has all the information that they need. So we're, we're really excited to do that. And thank you uh, to the viewer who had that great idea. So that's what we're going to do. So, Matt, here's what we got going on tonight. We got a whole bunch of stuff. So let me see if I can't, uh, if I can't make all this, uh, all this stuff happen. So first of all, let's see here. How can I show it? There we go. So what are we doing tonight? Well, again, everybody knows. I hope you know. Out of the Park Baseball 21 comes out. Worldwide, March 20th, 2020. You can pre-order it today, as you saw, otpdevelopments.com slash pre-order. Uh, again, 10% off, free gold pack, three days early. And I will just tell you guys this. Um, nothing helps an independent video game developer more than pre-ordering our game. Uh, 
there's nothing that that validates that what we're doing is the right thing. Nothing nothing really helps us more than pre-ordering. So you know if you're if you're if you love out of the park developments and out of the park baseball and you and you can pre-order it, we would we would really appreciate it. that. Helps us a lot. If you're a Steam person, totally get it, totally get it. I love Steam, so we understand. Uh, but pre-orders are a great way to show your support for out of the park developments. Uh, and again, that's what you get. You get a 10% off, 35.99, the public beta access on March 17th, and a free gold free gold pack. I should probably move over so you can see the whole URL. All right, everybody knows that. So. What are we going to look at tonight? Well, the first thing that we're going to look at is called Gameflow. So Gameflow is um, it's really a way that we have, uh, we, we've added a feature this year that really helps you understand what you want to do next. So let's, let's take a look at what that looks like. So right now, what everybody sees is the very first time worldwide out of the park baseball 21. This is... Uh, an example of out of the park baseball 21. Now I apologize. First off, I am a Mets fan. It's painful for me to to be in the Yankees screen right now, but I'm a professional and I have to do what I have to do. So I'm just going to put that out there right now. So as you can see, this giant green button right here, the continue button. This is the visual example of game flow. Now what's interesting. Um, for those of you who listen to our podcast, OOTP Now or Out of the Park Now, it comes out every Tuesday and it's on um, it's on Apple Podcasts and it's on Google Play and it's on Spotify. Tomorrow, uh, we have a uh, an interview with uh, Marcus Heinsohn, who's the CEO of Out of the Park Developments and uh, and the lead designer of Out of the Park Baseball, where he talks a little bit more about how uh, and why the um, the continue button or the game flow exists. Um, what's really interesting is that a couple of things happen. And Matt, you were there with us. We were at the all-star game this past year. Um, we, it was amazing. You and me and TJ and Chris, uh, we all got to go to the all-star game and, and we had a booth at the, the fan fest and we had our game there and we were showing it to people. And um, we got a lot of amazing comments and amazing feedback. Well, what was something that, that people that were not familiar with out of the park baseball, Matt, what was something that would typically happen with folks if they were sort of left to their own devices playing out of the park baseball? Yeah, so last year it was a great experience to kind of see up close people who'd never who'd never seen the game before. And basically, the first thing I noticed is that they didn't really know where to go. Right. So it was you know you'd, you'd be on a screen and it'd be kind of like so what do I do next? So, you know you're not quite sure. So that kind of started a whole discussion. And the, the sort of end result of that came out to be this this continue button that we put up in the in the top corner there. That's right. And it's it's a nice. It's not just certainly for for new users. It's it's great for everybody. That's exactly right. Because you can basically set it up and just kind of keep hitting that button as your as your as your game flow as a just for what you would naturally do next. That's what it tries to pick. And a couple other things about this that's interesting is this continue button. You know, when we originally had it there, it just said continue. But then as we collaborated with our beta testers and, and, and our, the folks who work with us during the development phase, it became clear that not only did we want a big old continue button, but we wanted to know where when you hit continue, where were you going to go next? So it says actually underneath it, what where are you going to go? In this case, it says play the game versus the Red Sox. One of the things that you'll notice you guys do with Out of the Park Baseball 21, not just with the, the game flow, but also with things like our 3D ballpark builder. Uh, you know, we're introducing these, but we're introducing them and we're going to be collaborating with you on ways to make them even better and more effective. And the game flow is a, is a great example of that. So when I hit the continue button, it's going to take me exactly where I want to go next uh, or where I'm supposed to go. In this case, it's going to be, you know, playing the Boston Red Sox. But one thing I want to do before um, before I do that, right, is I want to make sure that everybody knows that the game flow button is actually configurable as well. And that is configurable in the manager options. So if you want to dictate sort of what the continue button does for you, just go down to the manager options. And then over here, there's a, a button that says configure the continue button. And right there is where you get to say these are all the things that you want it to do or not to do. So the you know the, it's 
very similar in some ways to uh, you know how when you choose the play button, you can say all the 17 different things that you potentially want to do. But here it puts it together for you, you know, in a nice way where you can say, all right, well, I want to, I want the continue button to handle putting an injured player on the active roster, or you know, choose the events that will be handled. I, I want it to do the incomplete lineups and pitching staff. Or you can say, oh, you know what? I want it to take care of the private messages, but if somebody's injured or on the active roster, I don't want it to handle it. I want that to come to me. Or So you can choose all of these kind of things. You can also configure uh, the game flow for today's game. So if you have nobody scheduled, no game scheduled for today, the autoplay length will be uh, used to advance the game accordingly, and you can say what the, you want that to be. You want it to be a day, you want it to be until the next scheduled game, a week, two weeks, a month, next league event. You want to autoplay during the off season and the preseason, right? Because this regular season and the off season can be very different, right? The regular season you got games almost every day, uh, but the off season, you know, sometimes you're going to go a few weeks without a whole lot of things happening. So again, everything is is configurable. And if you don't want that continue button, right? If if you just feel like that's not for you, or or you may may want to have a franchise going with one, franchise going without one, you can just hide it. So like everything and out of the park baseball it's completely in your hands you get to choose and decide what you want to do with it and how you want to how you want to use it and i'm going to tell you this matt and i'm just i'm not just saying this because um you know because i, I work for out of the park uh developments now that i've been using the continue button i can't go back i won't go back i need that continue button and you can't make me get rid of it matt i'm not going to do it <laughs> so that's uh, the deal as we said, it's, it's configurable. So if, if you want it there, you got it there to use it. If you don't want it, you can hide it away. And then, as you said, the, the great thing is if, if you want to play out every game, you can, you know, have it so it plays out every game. And then you know that if you just kind of keep smashing the continue button, then you're not going to miss a game for your team. But if you don't want to play it out, then you just set it to, to auto sim and you can just kind of use that to, to just sim through the weeks. That is exactly right. Okay, very good. So that is a, a brief description of our game flow. And again, if you listen to Out of the Park Now, uh, podcast comes out tomorrow, you will hear Marcus talking about it. And one other thing I think that's interesting that uh, a bunch of fans are probably interested in hearing is that the actual, the genesis of this was not just interacting with the fans and sort of hearing you know, that some folks would really like a, a bit more of a guided experience. It also came directly from uh, the work that we continue to do on Out of the Park Go, our mobile app. Um, and Marcus talks about that as well. Uh, you know, Out of the Park Go is our, is our mobile app that will be coming out later this year, which when we have all of the details locked down on when that's going to exactly be available, you will all be the first to know because nobody wants that uh, more than everybody working for Out of the Park Developments. So that is a big deal. And uh, again, I thought it was interesting that, that Marcus mentioned that, yeah, during the work that they're doing on the mobile app, the, uh, the continue button really sort of became clear that it was needed there and then made its way to the game proper. So I thought that was really cool. So again, out of the park now, Tuesday, every Tuesday on Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, and Google Play. It's a, a direct podcast right from out of the park developments. So check that out, guys. Okay, Matt, let's see here. What is next? Up next, we have ah, configurable and dynamic screens. This is going to be a lot of fun. So now what we're going to ask Matt to do, Matt is going to live demo guide me through some really cool new UI configuration tools that we added this year. Um, I was going to do a side-by-side -side from Out of the Park Baseball 20 to 21, but I love Out of the Park Baseball 20 so much. I didn't want to, I didn't want to talk down to it. I'm, so we're just going to stick with uh, the new Out of the Park Baseball uh, 21 uh, with this. So, Matt, why don't you show me and tell me where to go here if we want to look at some of the awesome new screen configuration that we've done for, for player lists and player profiles and the team homepage. What do you say? Sounds good. So I guess I think we're going to talk the, the player list stuff first. All right. So, so I'm going to go to the uh, player list page. 
any any page with player lists. So there's some on the, the team page, your roster. There's some league player lists. There's your manager search pages. You know what? I'm going to the Mets, though. So just give me a minute. I'm going, <laughs> I'm going to the Mets. And I'm going to go to the, uh, to the default view here. And I'm going to clear my filters. And we get everything back to how it was. There we go. We got a nice giant player list page here of everybody's favorite Major League Baseball team, the New York Mets. All right, sir, walk me through what we can do here. All right. Well, I don't quite see your screen right now, so it might be a little a little awkward to, to how to coordinate through here, but we can. Uh... <laughs> well, we'll see how we can go. But basically, a lot of the player lists have been, uh, I would say, improved. Uh, you should see my so... screen now. Yeah, yeah. Uh... You should be able to see my screen now. All right. Oh, there we go. All right. So basically, we've we've improved a lot on on the I would say basically the navigation and just working your way through the player list. So a lot of it still is obviously the same. You get a big big list of players, and you want to to look at what you want to do. And kind of the the big thing here is that you can drag and drop and change the order of the columns. Because people have always wanted to rearrange columns. You hate the, the default order that comes up with the screen. So if you literally just click a column and drag it over, then it moves. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and you can you can set this up so you know you you do these things in whatever order you want. Mm -hmm. And it works it works great in that way. You can also temporarily stop that if you don't want to accidentally click and drag something. Right. And then also with this, you can also use a, a right-click menu as well and on any of these on the screens too, because not everyone likes to, to click and drag, but you can just right-click and use that to move columns left and right Yep. and do a lot of other stuff too. So if you want to add, edit, remove columns, you can just kind of go and in, in one click, you can take a column off if you don't like it on the screen anymore. And yeah. Uh, and if you want to add columns, you can go and add columns too. Very good. <clears throat> Fantastic. And again, you can see uh, all the different things that you have available here. Every attribute, every stat, it's all available here to be added. Yeah. So we've, we've gone through and people, you know, said before of like, why don't we have, you know, rule five status in the player list? Why don't we have short list in the player list? Why don't we have, you know, pick virtually any rating, any stats, any thing that exists in the game. If you go over to the, the miscellaneous tab, there's a whole bunch of, of uh, the miscellaneous sub tab here at right. the top. You got a whole lot of, a whole lot of roster stuff that people have just been, been dreaming of and dying for. I think we've got a couple more that might come out later too of, you know, your parent teams and leagues and divisions. I think is somewhere Maybe not on here, but we'll come in soon. Uh, on here, you do have your your player list as well, so you can rearrange columns and the and the little sub tab here as as soon as you add and delete and edit them. Yep. And it just it just makes it so much easier to to very quickly and easily configure the view to be exactly what you want. Absolutely, love it. Excellent stuff. And then further on to that, we've also made a few changes too on essentially where these lists can show up because you've got your team pages, you've got your draft pages, and you've got all that sort of stuff. So on the on the view menu as well, you can essentially we've consider the notion of essentially local views and global views. Mm. So you can create a global view and it will show up on literally every player list everywhere possible in the game. Uh, that's on the edit views menu at the bottom. Yep. So you got local <laughs> views and then global views. And you can say, well, I want a local view. Um, yeah, the, the, local, the local views will essentially be limited to, generally speaking, the page that you're on. So I think the team page is, is one. You just click, click on one of these ones here and you can use the, the buttons on the bottom to move them over to a global view if you want to you know, if you set up your perfect, this is the exact view that I want to make sure that is listed everywhere, you can just have it and you know it's going to be there no matter what list you go to. And if you want a view to be only on the draft page, then you just create it on the draft page and it's 
it's super easy to, to keep it there and know that it's there for that page. Love it. Love it. Good stuff. And All then right. to, yeah, to go on with this next, so we've also made a lot of changes to the filter menus, mm -hmm. which people have often complained about as the, you go and open, add a new filter, and there's like a really long list that you just remember that it's, you know, eight seconds of scrolling down to get to your, your batting ratings versus righties. Right. But now if you, if you go and add a filter to the column, basically the, all the, all the column filters come out, uh, you just choose a filter and you basically have this essentially the same view as the main page to choose the column that you want to filter in. That's right. <clears throat> And then we have a few more options for how to, to make sure you're, you're sort of fine. And on a lot of these filters too, so we've made sure that all of the, the ratings, the, the whatever you have to type into the box is exactly what you need to see on the screen. Normally, you don't have to remember that this column, you have to enter the, the one to a hundred rating and this other one, you have to enter the, the uh, you know, or the, the the view the 20 to 80 ratings or whatever uh yeah. we've added a lot of a lot of drop down lists to to various ones so if you want to filter by um i i forget which which ones but some of the ones like uh leagues or um yeah i don't even remember which other there's so many so many <laughs> ones we've added uh like player position as well for example is now just a simple a simple drop down list for for the position. Right. So if I say give me the position is just give me all the third baseman, hit a button and then use that and then that would just show up right there. Yeah. Yep. And then once once you have a filter on, then there's also some small little UI things that you can see that we add, you know, we add like a star next to the column to tell you that by the way, there's a filter on this on this on this column. Uh, if you right click on a on a column header, you can just right very quickly right click and add or edit filters to the column. And uh, you can disable call you know disable the filters quickly. I guess not every not every column has a filter on that. But, right, uh, right, right, right. Almost almost there everyone right. does. There you go. Add a filter for the height. So I want someone who's a third baseman who is, you know, at least five, eight. Now I want someone who's at least six, four. I want to only look at tall strapping third baseman and evidently the Mets have done. Oops. I best, I, I should probably clear yeah. that filter. <laughs> that's, that's a shot. That's... <laughs> but what was cool about that? I'm not sure if, if folks noticed, right? Because I chose the, um, I chose an attribute that was the height, right? So, well, yeah, so where was it? Uh, height is at least, and then it gives me this range based upon what an actual various heights are. So, again, to your point, I don't have to know, well, do I need to type 6FT, you know, 2IN, or no, you got it right here. So give me all the people who are at least six foot tall, for example, and uh, and you can then keep customizing it, and then, of course, you can save it and name it and do all those kind of things that you wanted to do. So all sorts of different cool stuff that you can do here. Yeah, and it just it just makes it so much easier to just you take your player list and you can quickly, you know, right click, we save the last couple filters that you've used there if you want right. to kind of go back and, and yep. reuse them. And it's just it's just so much easier to just, you know, very quickly add a column, filter by it, and you can see exactly what you want to see anytime you want to see it and as always you can always save filters and all that stuff too and there's an impact on the player profile page as well isn't there yeah and then essentially a lot of this a lot of this uh this stuff came out uh, or helped us on the player profile page because people keep asking you know it's like some someone comes up and says hey i really like fit can you, you know, make sure fifth is on the top of the page? And then someone else is like, well, I don't, I don't want it, or I don't like ERA plus. I want, you know, some other, some other stats on there. And essentially, we reuse a lot of the very similar controls 
so that you can actually edit the stats that show up on the on the player page too. So the the basically the stats that show up on the front of the pair player page, mm -hmm. we reuse what shows up on the pitching stats or batting stats sub tabs. That's awesome. And so, last, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say when you when you go to when you go to the stats sub tabs, uh, you can also control so on the on the pitching stats. Yep. Sub tab, for example, you can edit and control what uh, what columns and stuff show up here. So you can control on the on the view menu. Basically, yep. you can configure the view menu, and if you want to add an extra, you know, an extra view column. So this Moneyball one, for example, does not come default into the game. I believe that's right. That's right. That the Moneyball the one might have been one that I was configuring when <laughs> I was practicing this a little bit earlier. We'll, we'll just we'll say that might have happened. <laughs> but if, if, if you want to if you want to go and configure and again if you don't like the order that the default columns come in or you want to make sure that your your first stats page has you know a few other things going on with it you yep. can basically go and configure all of these menus to whatever your heart desires and then whatever you configure the the first menu to here is also what shows up on the front page of the profile that's right. So if you want to if you want to make sure that you don't see things on the front page of the profile, you can just go and edit the basic pitching stats and remove whatever column or you know whatever column you can move up. If you want your Moneyball one right at the top, you put it right at the top, and then you go back to the profile page, and that's the columns that show up on the profile page. Yep. yep. And that's exactly what I did. I'm not sure if everybody saw that, but I went to view. And then I chose edit, and then I put my uh, my Moneyball up there, and that showed up. Now, if I move Moneyball down and I say, let me get the expanded pitching stats, let me move those up to the top, I say OK. And then I go back to my profile tab, and now those are the stats that show up automatically right there. So these are kind of things where, again, we want to make sure that, that and, and Matt said it, we've heard loud and clear, you like certain kinds of information, you want to customize it, you want to put your player profiles together exactly the way that, that you want to get the information, and this is a great example of how that works. So again, complete customiz customization in your hand, and you can set this up for pitchers, you can set this up for hitters, right? So you, you have a lot of different uh, options there as well. Yeah. So, so Matt, the team homepage also has a little bit of some new configuration stuff on here as well. So if I click on the Mets team homepage, what are some things that I'm going to be able to do there? Yeah, so basically we've, we've made the homepage uh, also configurable. So with the essentially with the same widget that you had before on the, the manager homepage, you can also edit and control the setup on your team homepage as well. Right. So you can use the, the screen setup in the top to basically choose what what uh, what layout you want. And then for each widget, you have your your choice of widgets. So it's mostly the same widgets as before. I think there's a few new options that we have we've added in. We'll always, you know, take suggestions for for any other options you want uh, yep. coming in as well. And then essentially all these widgets are more or less shared with the manager homepage as well. So you can basically edit and customize and create to your heart's desire for for what stuff you want. So if you want, you know, if we've brought a few things like the, the team chemistry, you can bring that out onto your homepage to get sort of the, the quick, very quick team chemistry overview. Hey, why are my guys so unhappy? What is going on here? Matt, you broke the game. The Mets are unhappy. Well, it looks like they, they've got a, a little bit of a losing record so far. So that's probably... Uh, this is clearly clearly a dev build, folks. Pay no attention to the statistics happening on the screen whatsoever. They, they, might, they might be missing their team captain or something, too. So. <laughs> I'm not going to get upset yet. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so there's, there's a, a little bit more customization that you can go through here as well. And it just gives you a little bit more control over what exactly you want showing up and where you want it to show up as well. So, you know, if, if you like the team ranking side by side, you can set up your, your screen so that the rankings widget gets, you know, just wide enough so that it, uh, 
you know, it will it will go onto the the sort of two column display and all that sort of stuff to to control everything you want. Love it. Great stuff. So that's are some uh, some examples of the uh, of the new screen configuration tools you have. And again, it's the kind of thing where once I started playing with it, then I went back to Out of the Park Baseball 20, which I love. I was like, oh, I can't drag my screens or I can't drag my columns around. What's going on? It's driving me nuts. So it's good stuff, Matt. Good stuff. Some some real quality of life improvements here, especially for folks who really they want to completely have everything that they want at their fingertips. All right, Matt. So let's see here. What is next on our on our list after the configurable and dynamic screens? Oh boy, we got some new camera angles. All right, this is going to be a lot of fun. So Matt, you are going to have to be narrating uh, live some some really cool uh, nifty camera angles uh, that we've delivered. So let's let's do this here. What I'm going to do is the first one we're going to take a look at is center field action. So Matt, are you ready to talk to us a little bit about what we're going to see now, which is the center field action cam? You ready for that? All right, we can we can try to see how this works. Uh, <laughs> so a lot of a lot of these video clips, just to just to preface preface this a little bit, is essentially the the big new feature here on the on the camera angles is that. Uh, the cameras can follow the ball during the play as well. So Jorin, Jorin, our 3D graphics designer, has put a lot of effort into to basically making sure the cameras, you know, look and move and feel so nice. And we've we've done a lot of work in trying to get the cameras, you know, smoothing out how exactly it follows the ball. So there's still going to be more work to play as well. Mm -hmm. But essentially, on these. On, on the various videos that we go through here is uh, yeah so you have you have more camera angles to play with so for every play you can basically set it up that you have what I call a pre pitch camera so that's the the default camera that you see while you're waiting to choose your action mm -hmm. then you have a diff you can choose a different camera as a pitch camera so that's what you'll see when the pitch is coming in. Right, and then you can choose a third camera, which we call the action camera, which will play when the the action is rolling. So, so for various of these ones, like this one, I guess we have the the center field camera is the pitch camera, so you get that the sort of classic TV uh, overhead view, right, uh, while the pitch is going, and then afterwards we shift to the the default sort of wide angle the the back one while the camera goes. And as you get the the pop up, the cam the ball you know the camera will follow the ball going up into the air. It gets a little bit of zooming in and zooming out as it goes, just to to try to keep the ball in focus. And yeah, so if we've got you know, and we'll 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 for sure ship with uh, a few new camera angles. I think we snuck in some center field camera angles and a home plate camera uh, at the end of last year or somewhere in a patch uh, last summer. But we'll certainly go through and have uh, edit, edit the cameras a few more. I think a few of them may have accidentally ended up behind a wall in center field or, <laughs> you know, point, pointing towards the plate when they shouldn't have been. And yeah, you can, you can set up various, all the various camera angles for however you want it to play out. And as with everything, obviously you can turn off the features. So if you just want to play it in the old classic style, you can just set your, your wide angle for all three cameras, turn off the, the camera follow, and the game will play out exactly as it was before. Uh, we've added this nice little camera pan at the start of the game too, yeah. that can come in just to give you a nice view of your of all these beautiful parks. Yeah, that is nice, I like that, I like that. And then you saw after the after the, the panning uh, camera, which we'll take a look at here again. So here's here's what it looks like when the camera pans like you said at the beginning of the game in this case citizens bank park you got a nice view of the field the uh, the stands the the liberty bell sign and then in this particular example it looks like uh, the pitching camera is from behind the plate and as well as the action camera so it sort of stays smoothly as you see the ball hit off the uh, off the center field fence for a looks like a, a leadoff double for the diamondbacks up against the phillies there 
And uh, let's take a look at, a, at another one here. This is uh, starting in the center field um, and then moving to the home plate action. So here you can see the starting camera is the center field. And then uh, that's where you see the pitch. And then when the ball is uh, in, in play, then it switches to uh, the, uh, the home plate action cam and it follows the ball. So some really nifty new ways to, to watch the, the 3D action when it's happening. All right, Matt, now we're going to take a look at something else that I know a lot of people are very interested in because it's something that uh, something that we that that I think was probably one of the most unexpected items that uh, that we had. Um, and that is the all star game events. So this year we are adding uh, several things around the all star game. The first one of them is the home run derby or the home run challenge um, and i'm gonna pop that video up and maybe you can chat a little bit matt about what what it is uh how it plays and sort of what uh you know what the 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 day one launch uh home run derby is going to be all about yeah so we, we wanted to you know we, we've been to a few all-star games now and it's kind of always been on the back burner that i really wanted to add in a few more just fun events that you can play out. So here we have the, the home run challenge that you can play out. So it's, I, I will, I will preface this by saying it's, it's not going to be as detailed in some cases as, as a lot of other things. It's a little bit more of just a fun feature, but basically you play out the derby yourself. I love it. So See, I love it. That's, you can that's, start the round. It's so unlike anything else in the park baseball. And when the that's pitch comes it. in, you can click or hit a space bar. Yep. It, you just and you just gotta gotta time up time up your uh, time up your your hit and you know hit the space bar. Your batter swings and the ball goes. I love it. And I then absolutely love it. And then starts again. Oh, I think we get some errors on the video here, but I think we're good. But yeah, so basically, it's, it's okay. Uh, anyways, um, maybe it's my my on my side, but yeah. So so it's it's just a fun mode. So you can you can configure it. Basically, you can either let the game choose the players, or you can choose them. You just got your your eight man bracket. You can choose uh, what kind of round length you want. You've got a couple options for sort of how hard you want it. Yep. and how kind of fast or slow you want the ball coming in. And then you essentially just, as he said, the, you see the pitch, then you kind of hit space bar and hope you timed it right and see the ball goes. And you can basically, yeah, just have some fun with that. I am going to blow some people's minds right now too. So here's a couple of really cool things. So first of all, the Home Run Derby, uh, the Home Run Challenge is available as part of the All-Star Game festivities. So this year for 2020, the, uh, the Home Run Challenge is going to be uh, at Dodger Stadium as part of the 2020 All-Star Game. And uh, it, the, uh, you can have the game pick the, uh, the participants, right? Um, but you can also uh, do, and I, I forgive me if I get this wrong, Matt. But I believe not only can can the game automatically pick the participants, but you can also choose who the participants will be as well, right? Do I have that right? Yeah. So you can, right. yeah, you said you can either either let the game just choose the the people you you know the the participants, or you can, if you just manually want to want to play it yourself, you can just kind of play it out yourself. Um, yeah, and then you you can you as you said you can play out the rounds as you see fit but here's uh, what yeah. here, here's here's what i think is gonna yeah you can people. you can plan when it's scheduled too so you can you know right. control it either a few days before the all-star game a few days after the all-star game right you can turn it off obviously because it's you know OTP and it's everything is an option in OTP. and here's here's what i think is going to blow people's minds it's not only for 2020 it's any time when there has ever been an all-star game. Yes, you heard me correct out of the park baseball fans. It's not just new for 2020. Any all-star game ever, you can have the home run derby. Now, what that means is 
You can go back to any year that has the All-Star game. There will be a home run derby. It is not a – we do not have a historical database yet of who each of the participants were. And, Matt, again, correct me if I'm wrong, the home run derby is going to have the same rule set for all of different years. We're not trying to sort of mix and match the different All-Star games. But if I go back to the 1955 season and I want to play the All-Star game – I can have the 1955 home run derby as part of that. Do I have that right? Yeah, you can. You can certainly play out a. You know, if you're playing a historical year, you just turn on the the home run derby, and you can play out a derby in the old year. As you said, at, at the start, we're going to keep it fairly simple and only having sort of the 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 2019 or 2020 rule set going with it. Yep. But, you know, you can certainly, if you're playing a year, you can just pick out your historical players and, and play out the derby. I love and that. And I'm, I'm sure at some point we'll add in, you know, if you just want to kind of, you know, spawn it up uh, your own derby itself, you know, we'll add we'll add in some, some functionality there if you don't actually want to go and play through the whole season necessarily. But some, some of that functionality might come in a little bit later, I would say, uh, after release. Yep. So again, this is like a lot of like a lot of things that that you know can can expand or, or get modified as we uh, you know work with you and collaborate with all of our all of our fans. There's all sorts of different things that we can do to this. So very exciting. And speaking of the All Star Game events, it's not limited to just the Home Run Derby. We also have the Futures Game, or as we're calling it, the Prospects Game. So Matt, I'm actually going to switch back to in game mode here. And we're going to pull up a little bit of the uh, of the futures game or the prospects game um, here. So right now, I have gotten to a point in the season where it is the All Star game, and I uh, it is All Star weekend, and I can go right to the All Star prospects game. So when I click that, you're going to see that I've got it available to me now. I have this game. And I can, you know, obviously look at the lineups and I can look at the pitchers and I can choose to be one of uh, one of either of the teams. And uh, and so I can actually play the futures game directly in the game. This is brand new. It was not available before. And uh, again, just like the home run derby, you can go back in time. And so if you choose 1975 or 65 or 55, any time where there was an All-Star game, you are able to play what would have been the Prospects game at that time. I think that's amazing. I think that's absolutely amazing. I think it opens up a whole lot of just really fun, cool little things that are going to be going to be a lot of fun. And, Matt, it doesn't have to be National League versus American League. It can also be... Uh, United States versus the world, or if you're playing in a different region, that region versus the world, right? Matt, why don't you talk a little bit about about some of the subtle nuances that you have when you're choosing your prospects game? Yeah, so the the prospects game, essentially, in in real life, they've had kind of two main formats. They used to do the the USA versus the world, and then just, uh, I don't know, a year or two ago, I think they switched up to the AL versus NL. So, when we added this in, we figured we may as well just give you the option for both. So that's all in the league setup. You can choose whichever one you want. And yeah, you can now have the, the prospects game and anyone, anyone who's elected to the game, you know, you'll, you'll be able to out like a, an all-star game. And as I said, you can play it for any season or any game where you have a, uh, a minor league. Right. So as you can see here, you can see when you want the uh, when you want the game to be. So again, a lot of configuration. Do you want it a day before the All Star Game, seven days before? Do you want it afterwards? Do you want it on All Star Game Day? Do you want the format to be uh, by the uh, National League and American League or the United States versus uh, versus the World? So again, all those options. And again, here you can also see whether you want to actually have the the home run derby, whether you want to have the futures game, all of those kind of things, and where they are. So lots of Lots of cool little uh, little nuances here again to what will be here during, you know, when you have the All-Star Week, you'll have the opportunity to go jump right into it and play it. And again, it's not just new for 2020. Anytime that there's an All-Star game, you can go back in time and play what the game says should be that, right? So I think it's important for us to make sure we're it is based upon your playthrough, right? So it, it, uh, the, the AI is not um, 
beholden to choosing, you know, who was in the, the prospects game if there was one that year. Uh, it's simply just where, um, you know, it's it's based upon your playthrough, and that's not just for the prospects game, but also for saying who gets into the home run derby by default. The game will choose that uh, based upon what the uh, what the season's happening so far, right? Yeah, it all it all you know whatever playthrough you're doing, it'll pick the players who it thinks are are best suited for it. And as you said, you can watch the game, or you can play the game, or you can just let it sim the game and and see that. Love it. Fantastic. All right. Well, what is next? Let's take a look at what is next tonight. Stadium-specific sounds. This is another really interesting little nuance here that, uh, that again, it's something I think we've wanted for a long time, and we, uh, we were able to go ahead and make it, make it happen this year. So uh, I'm going to hit uh, cancel, and, and now uh, you, can, you can show me exactly how to show everybody where they're going to be able to see what the stadium specific uh, sounds are. So where would I go to, to check that out? Yeah. So to, to back up a little bit on this, so it's, it's not just the stadium specific sounds, but basically the, the whole in-game sound module has been in need of a little bit of a, an under the covers overhaul. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've rearranged essentially how we, how we handle some of the in-game sounds. So we no can way. now. Sorry. I had to play. say no way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I need to double check that we didn't get rid of the no way guy, but I think. <laughs> oh we've... no, that's impossible. <laughs> Better not have that. But yeah, so basically, we we've rearranged a lot of how we how we handle the in-game sound. So it just allowed us to add a few new categories uh, to the to the to the sound to let us play that out. And then with that too, we also figured we'd add in a way so you could customize uh, sounds for the ballpark. So if, if you know you have your stadium, uh, you know, right next to train tracks, you can make sure that you can, you know, add some, some train whistles and have that playing in the background. Or you can make sure that, you know, your background uh, sound loop has, has, doesn't have any airplanes, you know, if you're playing in the old, you know, Ebbets Field from back in the day or something. I love it. I love it. And so, then, yeah, so we've added a little bit of, of uh, interface stuff onto the ballpark page as well. Yep. So, uh, yeah, if you if you go edit the ballpark, we have a little sounds tab, which basically brand new, very quickly, yeah, brand new as of this weekend. But uh, adds in uh, <coughs> adds adds in the, a quick view of these are all all the different in-game sound categories that you can play out and adds a, a few quick link buttons to basically open up the sound folder. And as long as basically all you need to do is add a, a subfolder to the, the in-game data sounds folder in the sort of the same way that the, the ballparks have their own subfolder. And you drop in a sound using any of the, the sort of prefix categories that we have listed here. And your custom sound will play when you're playing a game in that ballpark instead of the default sound for that category of the stadium <laughs> so if, if your stadium has its own you know home run horn or your own you know its own you know whatever sound you want when a when a when a ball goes out you can you know drop in your own home run horn and that will play instead of the the default home run horn that we have That's that great. we have new or if That's you want great. if you want all of your all of your stadium vendors to be yelling out, you know, peanuts and cracker jacks with a <laughs> a thick a thick New England accent. You can certainly, if you find those files yourself, you can drop them into the folder. You can see them right here, so that you know, you know, you know, this is gonna gonna play out when you play. Love it, fantastic. Yeah, you weren't supposed to say that the uh, that the screen just got in here this weekend. We were supposed to keep that just between the two of us. Now everybody knows. Oh no, I'm just kidding. That's fun. We work we work all the way through release and after release. So yes, we do. a lot of the stuff will still change between now and release as well as we add new things. As we, as someone whoever it may be gives us something that we want and feel should be in, we'll add it in, and everyone will enjoy it. Absolutely. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Uh, so moving, uh, moving from that on to the uh, one, I think the, the last main item that we have tonight before we do our giveaway of out of the park baseball 21 
is a quick look at some of the 2020 specific roster and in-game rules. So let's take a look at that. So we know that this year in 2020, um, there are a couple of new, uh, a couple of new rules uh, that are uh, that are happening, and that includes the uh, the new roster size of 26 uh, 26 man rosters, and then there's also the uh, the 28 man rosters for the uh, for the September call up. So the default in the game is going to be. Oops, I didn't mean to change that. The default in the game is going to be, as you can see, the active roster size is going to be set to 26. And the expanded roster size after the roster expansion date of September 1st, 2020, is going to be uh, 28. And in addition, the default will be, you can see the minimum batter's face for reliever, that is going to be set to 3 because that is now the rule as well. So we uh, out of the park baseball fans have always been able to sort of configure uh, you know a lot of this stuff the roster sizes and the roster expansion states because everything in out of the park baseball is basically is configured but this minimum batter's face for reliever matt i believe is a brand new configuration setting explicitly set for for this season i believe and if you do have this set again which is going to be a default rule set then if you go to make a pitching substitution uh, when that reliever has not met that criteria, you will just flat out not be allowed to do that. Do I have that right? Yeah. So as I said, we try to we try to keep up on the on the new rule sets, and as with everything, it's it's an option, especially options that perhaps a very large subset of our community are not necessarily fans of. You can change that rule. And right. you can set that to be to be you know as you said you can set it to be one two three or four right now, so not not only do you just you know can you do the the one or three but we figured you know let's let's try let's see how things will work with if you have a two batter minimum instead of a three and you can kind of play around with stuff like that too. Awesome. And we've, you know, we've we've also added some other other quick little things like we've separated out the the batter and pitcher injured list length. That's another new change that's coming in this year. And again, that's something we're trying to, you know, make sure we we keep up a uh, keep up on. Absolutely. All right. Well, Mr. Matt Arnold, thank you very much for coming on tonight. We appreciate it. Oh, wait, there's one more thing I forgot: the upgraded live stats. So, um, live starts. Excuse me. As everybody knows, last year was the first year that we introduced the ability to live start. So, from any point uh, in time. During the uh, 2020 season, you will be able to start the season with exactly what the standings are, the injuries, the uh, trades. Um, so that's that's not in itself a new uh, a new feature. But new for this year are a couple of nuances to that. The 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 first new feature is that the 2020 playoffs will be available in a live start. So, for example, if you want to start the playoffs after the two wild card games, for example, with whoever won those games and, you know, with the right starting pitchers in the first rounds of the division, the, the division series, for example, Matt, you'll be able to do that. Do I have that right? Yeah. So the, the, the live start last year was certainly a fun, a fun and exciting new way to, to play mm -hmm. games out. And obviously, a lot of people kind of got upset when you get to the playoffs, and you know you couldn't really do that. And it, it was our it was our first year handling everything with it, so we weren't quite sure exactly how it was going to work either. But now that we've got another year under our belt, then I think we we've, we've got a, a much better idea of how we can how we can handle so that there shouldn't be too much trouble to be able to play through, you know, any any time uh, in the playoffs from any day that you want. Um, also, as well with that, I think we've we've figured out a way. I think we'll be able to do uh, or handle the minor league transactions in a much much cleaner way. As our our data provider was doesn't exactly track things in the way that we we wanted to, so we'll have uh, a little bit of manual work on our end. But we'll, we should be able to handle uh, minor league transactions for when you when you start a new game on a on a certain date. You'll you'll things will be updated. Perhaps not the same day, but our roster team is faster than I can I can tell them about things. So it'll be it'll be very quick for 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 updates on there. I love it. It's fantastic, fantastic, uh, Matt. Great job. This is just the first. Uh, this is just the beginning. 
of our three-part uh, Road to Release live stream series. So tonight was just the first look. We got another big uh, episode coming up next week. It's going to be hosted by your friend and mine, TJ Lowerman, a.k.a. that Sports Gamer. And, Matt, you'll be back. And that's going to be a deep dive into our franchise, the scouting and the drafting and some other really cool stuff. So I know a bunch of people are very excited about that. So thank you uh, for, for all of the great work that you're doing on that. Um, I just, again, want to make sure that everybody knows before we do our giveaway, if you pre-order Out of the Park Baseball 21 today, you are saying to your hopefully one of your favorite indie game developers that, hey, we love you and we love what you do. That is a great, amazing way to support all of us at Out of the Park Developments, and we would appreciate that very much. And if you pre-order today from otpdevelopments.com slash pre-order, you'll get 10% off. You'll get a free gold pack for Perfect Team. And you will also get access to it on March 17th, three days before the uh, official worldwide launch of Out of the Park Baseball 21 on March 20th. All right, we are going to do the giveaway. Uh, I am going to be turning off the giveaway. So in about five seconds, maybe make it 10 seconds, I'm going to turn that off. So if you are uh, in the in the chat and have not yet entered the uh, the exclamation point ticket. You got about five more seconds before I shut that down, and then we are going to do that. So, Matt, did you enter a ticket? Are you uh, are are you uh, are are you entered to win a free copy of Out of the Park Baseball Twenty One, Matt? I, I think I'll pass on that. I'll let I'll let someone else enjoy the game. Uh... All right, we are going to close the giveaway, and we are going to announce the winner now. Are you ready? The winner of a free copy at launch of out of the park baseball 21 for being here tonight is andy j dz1 congratulations andy you are the winner of the out of the park baseball 21 and you uh all you got to do is uh, reach out to me on uh Reach out to me on uh, on Discord is the easiest way, or on Twitter or something like that. We'll get you everything you need uh, to get that copy on or around the launch of uh, of March 20th. So congratulations, Andy. Uh, congratulations, uh, Matt, on putting together yet another amazing, amazing version of Out of the Park Baseball. I'm I'm so excited for it. I know everybody is. I want to thank I want to thank you, Matt, very much for being here tonight. We appreciate it. I know you have a lot going on right now, so taking the time to to do this is a big deal. We appreciate it. I want to really thank every single one of the people who showed up tonight. Had a great crowd. Uh, we've had a really amazing uh, experience since we, when we announced the game on Friday. So thank you guys very much for being here. Thank you for being part of what we all know is the best community and video games and that's the out of the park baseball community you guys are amazing you make it possible for us to do what we do so for that i am eternally grateful thank you guys so much uh be sure to join us again next monday night 9 p.m right here for the franchise deep dive with tj and with matt don't forget that tomorrow night we have a double header live stream we got uh, redbirds rising and we've got uh the big rich machine i'm going to get back behind the uh back behind the wheel of our, my reds franchise on Thursday, we've got Viva Lace Expos with our man Chris and then the, the Perfect Team playoff push where one of these years I'm going to win a Perfect League title. I made it to the World Series this year. I lost in six games. So there's all sorts of good stuff, all sorts of good stuff happening all week long. We are just we're thrilled. Out of the Park Baseball 21, it's coming. Thank you guys very much for being here. You are the best. We will talk to you again really soon. Until next time, thanks, everybody, and keep on playing Out of the Park Baseball. Thank you.